Hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 380 for the week of uh, December, December 18th, 18th 2000. Jesus Christ, you just said it like five times before 18. we recorded. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? Brock Sager. Kevin Sharp. Chris Bunch. And Charlie. Chris, is your mic on, or are you just very quiet? I'm just very quiet. Oh, okay, you're very quiet. You're here. Hello, everyone. We're back to record another uh, episode. Brock's too busy playing Marvel Puzzle Quest I'm not, I'm to Marvel pay Puzzle attention. Puzzle. Texting. Uh, Mar- Brock is texting. Hello. Oh, Charlie's sorry. Charlie's playing Puzzle sorry, Quest. Sorry, sorry, But sorry. you have Chris and my full attention. Excellent. That's okay. That's We're not in an Elseworld yet. Yeah, the Elseworld <laughs> show really screwed your head, <laughs> even though we haven't seen the last episode. Uh, well, what are you talking about? I did. I had a special up on, on Patreon Thursday morning about what I, my thoughts in the last <laughs> yeah. episode, and, and, and I, I'm sure I loved and it. And you have forbidden the rest of us from talking about it. <laughs> yeah. We are recording this episode a little bit ahead of time. Normally we record uh, live and put it up, but uh, because of holiday stuff, I'm going to be gone. So if all goes according to plan, I'm sitting on the sunny beaches of Hawaii right now. So taking a little trip with Leanne. Will you be out wearing there. a long sleeve black shirt? Uh, exactly. I'll okay. be sitting. Yeah. The sunny beach. I'll be sitting inside the hotel <laughs> yes. room in in Hawaii. So I'm going to try not to sweat the F one billion on blasting Joy Division. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, and scoffing at those tourists outside uh, and the worst. families. It's just the worst. Um, we no, are he's going to be going down the water slides, screaming like a boy. Like woo! We're gonna, we're gonna, um, myself and Charlie to get to see Spider Man into the Spider Verse. We got to see sneak previews. Uh, we're gonna talk about that briefly. No spoilers. I know the movie just came out this past weekend. As of don't this, tell me what to do. Uh, whoa, oh, <laughs> Jesus! Um, but it's getting uh, late. We will have <laughs> more. <laughs> we will have more um, talk about this with spoilers uh, down the road. Uh, fear not. However, uh, we do want to talk about this briefly, and then bring it some questions, and then we'll, uh, we'll we'll wrap up here. So, Charlie, how did you get to see Spider Man into the Spider Verse ahead of time? Well, my good friend Trevor, who I do the Wonders in the Fourth Dimension podcast with, yes, managed to get me and my entire family sort of into one of those early screening passes, nice thing that they give out, nice. So, went with the entire family down to the Eastridge Mall. On Saturday morning, so as Toby's proud of saying, we saw it before you did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why that's a thing, but all right. That's what I think when I go watch movies. Yeah. Before Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sitting, I'm watching it before Ryan. I'm gonna text him. I'm watching. Cool. <laughs> You I loved it when like you texted me on Saturday about Aquaman when I didn't see it either. That was a fun time. Well, I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, these future no, episodes really screw with us. It was good. I, I enjoyed Into the Spider-Verse and Aquaman, apparently. <laughs> Aquaman <is laughs> you, well, obviously you enjoyed Aquaman. I mean, you're, you're a rational human being. Uh, I got to go. Oh, and I will have seen Bumblebee by now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Leanne got uh, an invite through the Women Animation Group uh, through her school to go see. Uh, we went up to San Francisco at the Castor Theater uh, to go see it with the directors. Uh, they did a, a, a Q and A afterwards. So this was put on uh, through SF Film. So I was, so I was Toby and Charlie might have seen it before you, but you got extra special. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. They did a they did like a big signing uh, afterwards, but the line was massive. Like I wasn't going to wait in that, so I was. I had some I had some cookies. Yeah. I had some cookies to buy at the at the store next door. The oh store. yes, many that, cookies, yeah. including dick shaped cookies. Of course, I mean, you're in the caster, obviously, right? But um. Uh, but uh, whoa, whoa, this, I just had a regular. just I, went weird. There's a really good little. I just had regular cookies. Really good little. <clears throat> it's not a Mrs. Fields. It's like an independent cookie store. It's yeah. like a hole in the wall right next to the theater. Yeah, yeah. And it's just jammed with shelves of fresh baked cookies. Yeah, delicious. Yeah, and apparently cock. Some of them look like penises. And this San Francisco tourism minute has been brought to you by the Comic <laughs> Conspiracy. Now back to Charlie's review. Uh, no, it was a good movie, and without spoiling 3D? anything. 2D? 2D. Do they have a 3D showing of this? I have no clue. God, if they had a 3D show, you would die. I would. So, without spoiling anything that wasn't in the trailer, so if sure. you have no clue about this movie, fast forward a little bit. No, they did a great job handling the different spider people they incorporated into this movie. It was amazing, a lot of sort of the job they did incorporating elements of comic books and stuff into this movie. And the after credit scene is my favorite after credit scene of all time. 
So you're saying it was I spectacular? I absolutely loved the after credit scene. And it reminded me of some of the stuff they did, um, not in the main Spider-Verse um, comic, but they had this sort of like Tales of the Spider-Verse, I think yeah, it was called. Yeah. And there was some stuff they did in there that reminded me of this after credit scene. And yeah, I, I without spoiling any more, I'm not even going to say why I loved it, but in a future episode... I will probably rant for <laughs> quite a while about why I love that so much. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I had some reservations going into it because of the visuals. Uh, the directors actually talked about this a little bit at length afterwards. Cause someone did ask, like, "Did you want to make us puke?" W- what's up with the with the visuals in this movie? I mean, if you've seen the trailer, now some people either didn't notice or it doesn't bother them. For myself, something about the way they have like sort of almost fake 3d backgrounds yeah it's the stuff then, that's out of focus looks wrong yeah and they and what, and what the director said was their intention here was to um uh in, intentionally make stuff out of focus or 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 have this sort of like it's a 3d movie but you're not wearing the 3d glasses right so the background would look like that in certain sequences and they said their intention here was to draw your your focus to the in focus item on the screen, whether it's a character or, or uh, an item or whatever, whatever it is, uh, uh, they they were saying that as they were making it, they were experimenting with this film, and they were just too close to the end of the movie, and they were like, "This movie's coming out. We can't redo this. We just have to go for it. Uh, we can't change up the style. Of the, we can't change up this this technique because we'd have to redo the entire movie at this point. It's just not gonna. It just can't happen. So they they uh, they said Sony was like, "Well, okay, go for it." Um, and I mean, it is a crazy, frenetic, just nonstop movie. I mean, it doesn't pause for more than a second at points. Uh, uh, for, for, for me, it was a, almost a little too much. You know, Leanne had asked me, she was like, why Why can you watch, like, the, the original, like, the Michael Bay Transformers movies and that doesn't bother you, but this, like, kind of kind of hurts your eyes a little bit. And I said, you know, I, I saw this with Wreck-It Ralph, too. When, when Wreck-It Ralph 2 came out, I don't, anyone else? <laughs> you, some of you guys saw Wreck-It Ralph, right? Yeah, Ralph, yeah, Ralph breaks, breaks the internet. The yeah. internet. Um, remember at the very end when there's, like, the... I, this is a this is a mild spoiler for for a record Ralph when there's like the giant Ralph yes. right and he's made of little Ralphs yes and if you look at the if I look at the individual little Ralphs I'm like it's like kind of hard to look at because it's all these weird little it's moving hard to parts look at because it looks like an orgy but when you look at just the overall character that that it, that, that the little Ralphs become you it, it, it kind of clicks and makes sense. When I look at like the Michael Bay Transformers, I'm not trying to inspect every little spinning little piece. I'm just taking it as, as the whole figure. S- so much of this movie is, like Charlie said, these weird, unfocused 3D backgrounds. Uh, lots of very like sh- like like even more shaky than shaky cam. Um, you have multiple characters with multiple depths of fields and or, or no depth of field in some case, and completely different. Um, uh, 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 Styles. Like styles, so Penny Parker and Peter Porker are flat two D, even though they're three D. They're cartoon. Even well, there are three D models, but they're flat and they they look more traditionally animated. Where some of the other characters are, you know, are drawn in a completely different style, and so it's a it. It's a little like it's a little jarring because you're tr- you're going between so many different styles at the same point with these unfocused backgrounds and just to me the the times when the backgrounds were the hardest to watch is when there was a lot of motion going on in the backgrounds. Yeah. yeah. It, it's to sort of go with a sort of TV technique the whole idea of when you sort of put two characters in a car and you see these sort of backgrounds going by in the car that doesn't tend to bother you but you're it's very hard to not be aware of it mm. so in scenes in this movies where you'd have this background kind of going by it's kind of hard not to take some amount of focus on that and that's where i kind of felt like that technique was hard to deal with yeah and it doesn't it didn't ruin the movie for me i wasn't like five minutes in i'm like oh, i'm gonna vomit and get out of here like that it <laughs> wasn't like that but it definitely 
it definitely made it Nobody more difficult. pool. I, I definitely pulled my eye. I kind of pulled away at points, and I had to rub my eyes like, oh, man, like this like really hurts to kind of watch. I wonder if it would just be better on a small small screen because you know, it's a big or screen and everything. you could just drop some acid before you um, go away. Oh, jeez. <laughs> go crazy. Uh Story-wise, it was fun. I mean, if you're familiar with Spider Verse, it's 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 not so dissimilar from that. Uh, uh, their interpretations of the different multiverse Peter Parker. I mean, we don't get a real Peter Parker in this movie, right? I mean, we get these different kind of multiverse versions of the character. Um, um sort of. I, I won't argue. Okay, but I, I understand your point. But I do kind of feel <laughs> like if you take goddamn spoiler territory. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean. Obviously, a, a comic book. Nothing was the real Peter Parker short of the comic book, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, this is there were not in, they were not trying to be the comic book Peter but Parker. There that, that's still, not the case. there's enough of it in there to go. Okay, that felt like the genuine Spider-Man sort of yeah. article. Yeah. Well, yeah. There, there, there are. Well, again, if you're okay. familiar with Miles Morales without, and the ultimate, without spoilers, we probably need to get off this topic. Yeah. Well, we're gonna again, just drive right it, into spoiler territory. They, 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 say, they draw a lot from the Ultimate Universe, obviously, right? And Miles Morales is 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 yeah. the main character in this movie. Uh, uh, they they have various versions of Peter Parker, including um, Spider Man Noir. They have uh, Penny Parker, who uh, is the the uh, kind of anime inspired. Uh, Girl from the future with a with a giant mech robot. There's Peter Porker, the spectacular Spider Ham. She seemed so. She was I from remember, the Edge of Spider Verse, right? That, that's that, what I was going to ask. Think that's where she I first was having trouble remembering where she. Like I know she appeared somewhere, but I couldn't place where. Yeah, yeah, she was in the original Spider Verse. Okay. Um, Spider Gwen. It's Spider Gwen, of course. Yeah. And she's sort of. It, it's really. I'd say it's her and her and Miles are, are like the main characters mm-hmm. in the movie. Um. Am I missing one? Oh, well, and, and Peter Parker and, and Spider Man, a, a version of, of Spider Man. Uh, and it's a, you know it's a fun story. I mean, it's it's crazy. And again, if you're familiar with the Spider Verse comic, I think you have a pretty good idea what's going. on. It's different. It's not the same plot, but it's you know multiverse. All these characters kind of get together for a mission. Again, it's very inspired by the Ultimate Universe, so I think they take a lot of cues from that uh, more so than than the traditional Marvel universe. Watch out for Franklin then. Um, and, I mean, uh, I was just sort of thinking about this. Like the the Spider Gwen stuff that they did was directly out of the comic books. There was really no changes there to yeah. her character at all. Miles, obviously, because they're doing this this way, it's not a direct adaptation of no, Miles's no. backstory or no, anything. No, no. Um, I would say Spider Man Noir seems pretty. And they're, pr- I mean, in, in touch with sort of the comic roots of that. Character. And they, have mi- I mean, but they, ha- you know, their 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 plots are minor within the, yeah. within the movie. Uh, obviously, the- but I, I like how well they established that. Nope, those are absolutely the characters right out. Like Spider Gwen was taken right out of the Spider Gwen comic. Yeah, yeah, no. it wasn't a adaption. Like it feels like she stepped out of the Spider Gwen comic universe into this story. Yeah. Well, what I what I do like about a lot of the movies is that you know I mean I've never been a big fan of Miles Morales. He's fine, like whatever. I, but I, I don't really care about him. I'm, I I actively dislike Spider Gwen in the comic books, uh, in her own book, right? Like I don't mind her when she shows up in other stuff, but her book I I am I'm just not a fan of. Um, but the movies do a good job of taking those characters and distilling them into something that I think is a little more palatable and a little bit more like we're just going to take the better parts of it and, and make it work. And the movies do a really good job of this as well. I mean, you know, we can always go back to the Iron Man. Again, nobody cared about Iron Man before the Iron Man movie came out and now he's suddenly the biggest character at Marvel, right? I mean, this is just a fact that Iron Man was never – nobody's favorite character was Iron Man. It just wasn't a thing. I mean well, – I guarantee you there was somebody who uh, would be like, yeah. that was my favorite of, character. The, of the, Iron, the, the guy that ran the official Iron Man. <laughs> Man site. Of course. But the movies have always done a great job of taking the 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 near infinite stories of yes. these characters from the books and really distilling them to kind of the kind of the, the and this goes to Marvel and DC and, and even pre MCU and you know, going back to the the, the Richard Donner Superman movies and, and everything. I mean, this has always the, been the case. The comic books give you give you a story that is, you know, <coughs> for the most part 
well-rounded, okay, you know, the good ones really stand the test of time. But going into the movie, you can go, well, what would work better? Like, it's a chance to kind of it's a, it's a revise it a bit and yeah, make it yeah. make it more than what it was in the comic. I mean, you learn from, in some of these characters' cases, you know, dozens of years or yeah. 30, 40 years, right, or more. Um, obviously, you know, Peter Porker's backstory is very light, so they have a lot of fun playing with that character. And Spider-Man Noir appeared in like four comics ever. Like he appeared in that miniseries. Oh, and I guess they brought him in the Spider-Verse, but yeah. he's not a character. It's it's a He's, he's even been in video games, Ryan. Yeah, but it's his it's his, it's his nothing that they actually do a really cool job well, with in, in, like, in the movie. Wasn't he in that web slingers one too? Again, right, but he's not I mean, he's such a it's such a minor weird thing. Uh but they do a good job Comic with Comic Vine. How many appearances has Spider-Man Noir had? Uh yeah, and and I, I thought it was fun. Um, uh, I, I don't have too much more to, to say other than that. I mean, I think it's worth seeing, and if you don't mind the visuals, it's definitely worth seeing in the theater. I mean, people around us seem to just figure love out how it, to put so. that after credit scene on repeat. <laughs> so when I heard about this, everyone was talking about the after credit scene. <clears throat> no, 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 no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> and I thought, well, what could they possibly do? It's pretty good. It's it's pretty good. God, expectation level now just went. If I had a complaint, <laughs> oh snap! It may Charlie's just have like that pulling up his it, sleeves. It may have that like Family Guy like. Hey, where it don't just, don't don't it don't give any context just to what, goes on what it is. A little too just long. Don't give any context. I just said it, like Family Guy, which gives it context. No, just. Quiet. Okay, it was pretty good. It was pretty <laughs> good. Kill this guy's mind. It is definitely, it is definitely top three post credit scenes. Well, what's your top one <clears> post credit scene? I don't know, but it, it probably wouldn't be this one. But it was good. I did really like it. It was very fun. It was a very fun post credit scene because, of course, I'm like, well, what are they going to do? Like, are they tied to the MCU or do they? The, is Stan Lee there or like? Wh-? I was like, oh, that's not what I was expecting. But okay, that really works. That's neat. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Now, um, now this is post credit, not mid credit. Yes, this is post credit. Yes, okay. There is a mid credit one too, right? Nope. Yeah. <coughs> is there not? Nope. I think there's what? some brief. Was thing there in something? There. It was some spider ham thing. I'm what was it? trying to remember. <laughs> no spoilers. That's okay. The only spoilers. thing I remember from the movie I'm just asking vividly. It, I'm just is asking if it exists. Scene. Yeah. No. I. I know. I think. I think it's just the post credit. I think it's just the post credit scene. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very up some green eggs. Um, Who called you about the post credit friend first? <laughs> probably the internet. <laughs> ah, you screw you. <laughs> uh, I called you Ryan Higgins. Uh, I, <laughs> Yeah, and I know, and I know Leanne, and I know Leanne on the Facebook group. If if you if you follow if you follow us on there, she made it sound like I hated this movie. I, I did not hate this movie. Um, you enjoyed the movie, you just didn't like looking at it. The thing is, Leanne sleeps next to you, so she hears the stuff you say when you sleep. So you're like, ah, fucking spider. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes. Ah, oh man, I got throw up. <laughs> I, I I I I think again. We'll we'll go back to. So the, the, so many complaints on the internet of, of things have to be a one or a ten. I mean, my, any any minor spoilers I had, or spoilers, any minor problems I had with it, or, or things that I was like, yeah, okay, it was, you know, I liked it, but I didn't, I didn't love the scene. As soon as like, yo, I hated it. What's something is a ninety nine percent on Rotten Tomato, and you say one even remotely critical thing well, it about a movie? Have a D or a C? Pe- in front people, of it. people, um, like to, like to like to get in your case. So, uh, uh, Leanne. I did like the movie very much, even if you don't think I did. Uh, but we're so I, gonna get I don't shit at home for that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I saw people say this is the greatest superhero movie that's ever been made. Um, I would not go that far. I enjoyed it, but I, uh, you know, it is. And I don't, I don't say this. I don't mean to have to say, have this kind of come off the wrong way, but it, I think it is tough for an animated movie to to beat something. Like a Winter Soldier or an Avengers uh, an Infinity War, because I feel like the animated movies that you're sort of uh, kind of have an unlimited budget with what you can do because it's animation and, and and it is interesting, right? And I, mean, I love anime. I love animation. I absolutely love animation. But to me, the connectivity in the MCU and what they've done in the, in the live action movies just just 
just just has a more of a gravitas for me. I just I just to me it just there are certain <coughs> things that are possible and easier to do in a animated form like this yeah, than you yeah. would get in live action. So I wouldn't necessarily judge them to the same scale. I love uh, I, I love like Batman uh, Beyond Return of the Joker and and I yeah. love a lot of the DC animated movies. Do I like them better than um, uh, the live action movies? I really like. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. No, but uh, if you take <clears throat> to me what it kind of comes down to, I mean, even if you take Batman as the example and just say rank all the Batman movies there's ever been from sort of best to worst, Mask of the Phantasm is going to be very high on my list. Yeah, it may not yeah, be number yeah. one, but it will definitely be within the top five. Yeah, yeah. What's the worst Batman movie? Doesn't it have to be Batman and Robin? <laughs> that, that was my first thought. Is there another even strong contender? <laughs> that was my first thought, but I'd have to go back and see all the stuff I would potentially count. <sighs> Especially because Batman Harley Quinn would be in there somewhere. Oh, so you're counting all of those. Yeah, yeah if, I, okay. if I'm oh, pulling in Mask okay. of the Phantasm, I have to pull it. Well, I was thinking because Mask of the Phantasm was Did theatrical. Have a theatrical yeah. but okay. No, I would I would count all the movies. That means straight to TV movies, too. Yep. So, Spider-Verse, go check it out. Do we have some questions? Uh, yeah. Charlie, any last words about Spider-Verse before we, before we move on? No, I've been trying to get you to, like, stop spoiling. I'm not spoiling context. anything. I'm not spoiling anything. Listener questions, <clears throat> since we didn't give any last week. Uh, we do have. We have we have a ton. Um, let's, I'm going to do a couple Twitter. I'm going to do a couple... Um, I'm gonna do a couple here on um, uh, from our, our our email bag from forever <laughs> oh, ago. Oh. <laughs> I like the email bag. Yeah. <clears throat> Got one here for we had a, a question here from Edgar Moreno on Twitter. He says, "How popular are the Power Rangers comics at your store?" We we stock Power Rangers comics. Uh, we did when they first came out. I've not continuously stocked them. They do not sell great here, unfortunately. We do have a couple subscribers that get them, so we, we sell them to them. Um, licensed comics are tough. Yeah. I find they start off really strong, and then uh, once people kind of... I know the first hardcover supposedly is super expensive and rare now. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's... it's. Should have gotten it when you had the chance, Charlie. No, the one I'm kicking myself right now is the um, one of the Colossal Conans I didn't oh. order. Mm. But I could still technically scare that up, not too much over cover price, just because it's pretty recent. But How do you Christmas present alert? He also asked, have you guys ever heard of the comic America's Got Powers? It was the first comic I picked up back when I started reading comics back in 2012. Is that the one written and drawn by Brian Hitch? Brian Hitch? Yeah. I, yeah. Think I, so. I never read it. I never read it. Yeah. It, it was. I can picture a cover. It was. Uh, <laughs> He's a great artist. Uh, Not I always mean, great. Not always the best writer. It was. I read. I don't even think I finished. I don't know if I finished it. <laughs> I kind of blocked it out of my mind at some point. Next question. It's not something I would recommend. <laughs> Here's an email. Ever. From November 4th, 2015. Ooh, oh. November 4th, 2015. You, you thought I was going to say 2018, didn't you? <laughs> no, I didn't think that. I thought you were, the email was going to be something like, Dear Comics Conspiracy, what do you guys think about Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams putting Green Lantern and Green Arrow on the road? <laughs> It's from Brock Smith. He says, what's up, fellow comic geeks? Just want to start off by saying hey, I fellow BS guy. thoroughly enjoy the cast and the insights I glean each week from it. Also. Well, that was three years ago, though. Also, Brock. <laughs> also, Brock has the most fantastic name ever. Oh, yes, Brock there does have a there fantastic name. Yeah, yeah, you guys are full of BS. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I recently finished reading the Trinity War graphic novel. Recently. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the story... <laughs> The story was great. I really want to know what happens next. I'm guessing there's another collection of comics that continues the story, but I'm having trouble figuring out what to buy. Well, <laughs> just in time for Christmas 2018. Um, Trinity War was the the uh, Justice League New 50, uh, Justice League New 52 crossover between Justice League Dark, uh, uh, Justice League, yeah, and yeah. that was pretty much and it. Trinity War is the, is the direct lead into Forever Evil. So yeah, it's leading yeah. for every role. It Pandora makes more of an appearance in that. Yeah, and then we get the Trinity of Sin afterwards. Oh, well, <laughs> and then Pandora just fucking gets she gets fucking Manhattaned in Doomsday Clock. Yeah, and uh, so Manhattan. Manhattan just means urban dictionary. You're poofed. Like done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you become you become 
you become a scrub on the floor. So, <laughs> um, man, really, God, is there a bigger waste of a character than Pandora? The setup for that character, and then fucking yeah. nothing. Yeah, just nothing. I don't know what they were thinking. Speed and the bump? question we well, had years of we had years of that question, and like I mean, the question, question, the comic book character, the yeah. question. And they didn't do shit with it. Yeah. Phantom Stranger, they at least did something with, but again, it's just another retelling of the Phantom Stranger stuff that yeah. just doesn't go anywhere. Ugh. God, Pandora, what's up? What's wrong with you? So there you go, Brock. Go uh, go buy um, Forever Evil. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree that the <laughs> well, at this point, Trinity you should read them uh, Doomsday Clock. Doomsday didn't Clock. have a good payoff, but I did like the setup at the time. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll get that really good uh, David Finch quick artwork oh, in uh, Forever man. Evil. <laughs> <laughs> there were it, some panels in that Forever Evil book. It's that, fine. It's peaceful. Y- yes, on average, it's... like hey, I like David Finch, hey, but I, that, but the some panels in that series just felt right. Bryce goes off like that book is drawn by, like, <laughs> I don't know, Adolescent me. Like, crap. like, it's not that bad. I mean, maybe compared to his war, his best art ever, but it's like it's not that bad. Well, see, so, so this is the thing: Forever Evil leads us into Grayson, yep. which gives us <laughs> something Tom King wrote, which then will lead us into Batman, Mister Miracle. So it's all good. Yeah, I don't know. For me, if you really talk about Forever, Forever Evil, it kind of leads <laughs> into the whole Lex and the Justice League and stuff yep. in the yep. Yep. Justice League book by Dark Johns. Side. After that, Dark Side War, which was amazing. So, this question from Robert. He says, "Podcast quest, podcast question. I know the big two superhero genres is your niche. Uh, do you guys read any independent stuff regularly? We'd love to hear you discuss what's really good at the indie scene from time to time. Now, we get this question a lot, and Robert's one of my good customers here. Um, I mean, I mean, I just straight, uh, straight honest. I read so few independent books these days. Uh, a lot of it, I just don't have time for. What are we defining independent? Not Marvel, not Marvel or DC. Marvel DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I would love to read more indie books, but I mean, there's so much Marvel and DC stuff out in the, uh, there now. So I, that's mostly what I read. However, I, every now and again, I do pick up something, and I do have I, some of the you know. You have like it, trade stacks like of like the, the Walking Dead ones. and Saga and Bla- and Black Science and 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 and, and um and. What's the other one? Um, uh, Descender and uh, a few of the other books. Like, I did read the first few volumes that I've been trying to keep up with, but kind of the, all the usual suspects. But yeah, I just – it's a lot of comics out there, and it's tough to read. And you know, a lot of the graphic novels – or a lot of the Indian books, they read better in graphic novel form, so I kind of wait around for those. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean my list has been pretty much the same for independent reading with Manifest Destiny – uh, Outcast, which hopefully will finish at some point. Um, you've already mentioned uh, a couple that I've read, um, but you have also like um, a lot of new stuff comes out. But it's like, again, it's what are you really going to pick up and grab? Yeah, I. For me, it's the same kind of thing. I reached a certain. I don't want to say quantity, but it really is quantity of indie books that I'm kind of prepared to buy in hardcover and that kind of stuff mm. as it come out so like yeah i was keeping up with lazarus i was keeping up with velvet um both of those are, velvets ended yeah lazarus, lazarus is coming back yeah um and then of course there's stuff like low that came out and there, there's plenty of really strong creative teams doing good indie work it's just I don't get around to reading the book, so I buy well, the hardcovers and they the go into a stack have, at home at this point. Some of the schedules have been off. Like Seven to yeah. Eternity is really good, but they took a break on that for a while. Uh, and, uh, like Lowe's been off like I think this entire year. Yeah. yeah. A, a lot of the indie stuff that I liked in the 80s and 90s, I mean, they just don't publish that type of stuff anymore. The comic market's very different. Uh, a lot of independent stuff now is graphic novel, a lot of slice, and, slice of life stuff, which has never really been up my alley. Um the typical image IDW uh, uh, non licensed stuff. Uh, uh, if there has been a time where there has been more mini series that go nowhere than now, I, I, I don't know it. I mean, just the idea of an ongoing independent comic is like it, they, don't, they barely exist anymore. It's just such a different market. Things just don't run the way they used to. So, and that's not necessarily when, a bad thing, do... but it's just not why I read comics. I like the long stories. Yeah. I don't read it for a five issue miniseries. When they do the miniseries properly, like Stumptown is one of those that I like because it's 
it's a series of mini series, but it's also like Black Sad and that kind of stuff where it's like this is a sort of detective story with a payoff for that story and then they do the next mini series with the same detective. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of thing. Yeah. And I like that. I like I like when they can use mini series to sort of do the this is a story we're telling right now, we'll actually have it come out on time, yeah. we won't do long delays. And then there may be a delay before the next mini series picking up the next story with that yep. character. Yep. Yeah, I've, but I've, it depends on the property for sure. I've converted to reading some stuff just straight graphic novel. Yep. Like Port of Earth is one. Um, I can't remember the other one. It's like set in the future with like journalism and taking over. I can't remember the name of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like Beauty. I read in Only Trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't even. I didn't even try it. Is that any good? Do you I like love it? Beauty. Beauty. Really I heard it's good. good. Yeah. Like it's I never it, even tried the, it. The premise is really good. The 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 story kind of you get one story in one book and then it kind of you kind of get another story in the next trade um, because they they're telling other perspectives and then you come back to the the main characters that you were following in the first one so I, I like right. kind of the path that it's taken um, but I really enjoy beauty uh, in trade I read like animosity in trade yeah. like I really like that one um, but yeah there's just so many independent titles yeah it's a lot. And I mean, I heavily read most of Valiant's lines, so yeah. And there's, yeah. A, there's and, a ton, ton more books. Yeah. Yeah. Question here from Jordan. Uh, it's from November. Before we go there, I'd like to announce I'm leaving, and the reason why I'm announcing it is because I'm going to home to watch Supergirl before Ryan Higgins. Nice. <laughs> oh, I saw it a week ago. What are you talking about? What? Um, <laughs> Wait, what was the to- shit. what was the topic we were just talking about before that? Independent comics. Oh, I think my indie reading, as I'm think- listening to all you guys' picks, I think mine's all image. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. The- I love uh, East of West. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. love East yeah, of West. It's wrapping up, um, right? Yeah, I think so. I also currently is Death or Glory. Oh, yeah. I'm really enjoying that. Mm-hmm. Black Hammer and um, That's Dark Horse. Yeah, Black that is Dark Horse, stuff. right? And Sex Criminals, mm-hmm. and uh, pretty much. All of those that I just named, except Death or Glory, I read in trade, I think. Mm-hmm. I just find they read better in yeah. a yeah. chunk. Mm-hmm. I've been sticking single issues so far, and I've just been doing like everything Rick Remender does, everything Jonathan Hickman does. Yeah. Which is nothing now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he barely does East of West. Yeah. Is he doing anything else? Black Monday Murders has been I mean, everything dying. Is that over yet? Yeah. Everything, all those books have just been just abandoned. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah, no, there's there's a there's a fair like I, I think what people would need to realize about independent comics is independent comics is where you go to kind of to to fill that that want that you have that's not a superhero or not. Yeah. You know, it's like you're not finding anything, you know, you you read your superhero comics, but there's something that you want like let's say a mystery or you want something post apocalyptic or you want something that's, you know, just off the wall crazy or, yeah. you know, just down, you know, slice of life stuff or whatever. That That's yeah. where you go for of independent. Course. Did you read Die, Karen Gillen? I liked it. No, I didn't read Die. Yeah. I read Die, Die, Die. Slightly different. Yeah, slightly different. <laughs> Three times better. <laughs> <laughs> we got a question here from you, Jordan. You roll a 60. It's from November 2014. Is this, an, is this an email is question? An email? Listeners, here's a public service. If Send going, me email. If you're going to email, don't ask anything that's a current question. <laughs> Just ask an evergreen question. No, no, no this no, is great. No. This is the great stuff. <laughs> this is not intended... I just was like, I have so many emails we never got to. We went from Trinity War to Batman. <laughs> All right, let's see. I've been listening to you guys since episode 61 and finally taking the plunge into comics thanks to you. I read my comics through uh, trades. apologize to your wallet. As I can't keep up with ser- the single issues due to price, it's eleven dollars and ninety cents for a standard three ninety nine comic where I live. Where the hell do you live? <laughs> I, I mean, I mean that's some crazy exchange rate. It's got to be the North Pole. Uh, yeah, it's got to be mainland yeah, European country. Yeah, or, European yeah. country. Or, um, I don't think you, no, Australia's like half that. Um, I mean, to gather up what would be considered the main story trades of Green Lantern during Jeff Johns' run. I was wondering if there were any <laughs> trades you would recommend getting. I've got Blackest Night and Wrath of the First Lantern in hardcover. I'd prefer hardcover, but I can't possibly get them all. Just do the omnibuses. I was going to say, the omnibuses, all three of them are still in print. That would be probably about $600 per <laughs> omnibus, given your conversion rate. 
But no, um, I don't think it, no. unless a book you, rate is cheaper than a periodical, I, I, maybe. Depending. And I, see if you can order. They're going to put out the Blackest Night omnibus soon. That comes yeah. out soon. But yeah. this was a great way to once again tell you that the complete Jeff Johns. Green Lantern uh, collection is coming out in soft cover trade paperbacks. The first issue – or the first volume was solicited. I believe it's issue – it's like – it's uh, Rebirth on like 1 through 13 or something like oh, that. Oh, that'll or be canceled through... next month. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Son of a – Sorry. <laughs> <for the laughs> or like 1 through 7. It's a bit – they're going to be chunky. Uh, but that's okay. This stuff. person no, it, said it was they like hardcovers. In between yeah. uh, like the 11th and the 18th. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean – even if you get the the, the singles uh, in, in hardcover, I mean, I think the omnibuses were still, would still be cheaper than that. Yeah, at this point. Yeah, so uh, if you can afford the omnibuses, that's your way. Three books get you every single part, every single thing he's done. A fourth, if four, if you want to double dip and get the Blackest Night with yeah. all the tie-ins. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, you're good on the three, so you don't need the rest. And there's a Brightest Day omnibus, but I don't know if that's still in print. Uh, yeah, I don't. Wasn't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it is. I don't think I've seen it for but a while. Three paperbacks now. No. That's okay. Yeah. That's what the internet is. Dominic on Twitter says, find hidden treasures. DC is clearly trying to ditch the dark aura of the movies with Aquaman and Shazam. Which character would benefit the most from this new approach? I mean, I think the answer would be Superman, right? I'm uh, I'm assuming for most people that would be the the answer. Uh, As long as it doesn't involve Superboy Prime, (laughs) I'm good. SBP. SBP. Fucking kill you. I'm uh, assuming he's meaning a character that's already appeared in a movie. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, Superman. Superman yeah. would be the big one. Cyborg a little bit. I mean, I just, they, don't just, they just don't get in, uh, into him enough in Justice League, mm-hmm. I, I feel. Uh, and, and Flash, I think a lot of people were mostly okay with, with Flash and Justice League. I don't, I don't think there were too much complaints. He, he seemed to be kind of the lighter, uh, mm-hmm. lighter part of that movie. He's, he was just It was just a younger portrayal of Barry Allen. Yeah. No, I don't want Batman to suddenly be out there cracking jokes and doing the Batutsi or anything like that. All right, there is absolutely. I mean, Nightwing. Man, I am tentatively <laughs> very excited for that Joker movie. I think that's going to be. I got high what, hopes what, for why, that movie. What, what brought this on? I think it looks those those behind the scenes shots that they've shown and the videos they've shown. I think look pretty interesting. A dark, dirty, but we're just no, kind of going dark, not going low light. budget. No, but but I don't need a I don't want a funny Joker movie. I want a dark as dark Joker movie. I want a depressing as because that's not even a part of the, like who would be lighter like it, what? Th- th- that's what I mean. I I don't think every character would benefit from this. And I also I, like the Wonder Woman movie was the Wonder Woman movie was a fairly dark movie. It takes place during World War One. I. I mean, it's a, it's in a terrible the trenches point. Is pretty yeah, shitty it's place. a terrible point. But she's kind of this like light this beacon of light within the movie right and i think that's sort of it was a good point i don't want wonder woman out there cracking jokes either i don't want wonder woman to act like aquaman does because that wouldn't be wonder woman so i think every character you have to find the the take on them that works and shazam clearly lends itself to some comedic hijinks this version of aquaman clearly does and superman i feel it i don't again i don't need superman cracking jokes either i like a nice balanced light superman Next up, i can't wait Clark till Kent. the shazam movie has 100% on rotten tomatoes ah uh, it's a dc well like like <laughs> DC, Aqu- like aquaman at 100 and dropped to eight, like well 65. no you start no, no. you start at 80 if you're a dc movie and you go down so when a dc movie no. is 75% that's like a 95% for a marvel movie they just started at a lower amount that's just what happens because Rotten Tomatoes is owned by Disney, nope. right? Shazam's yeah. going to sit there at like 100% and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just get a blue, a blue and gold movie already? Only after the Shazam movie does well. Okay. <sighs> um, let's see. They're going to like rush at? out like three sequels. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to email? Let's go to email. Email. Let's go to, let's go to our good friend Bevins. Hold on, hold on. You've got mail. Uh, why do Why do I keep grabbing ones from November? Well, this is November 2013. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wow. This is, this is like two years after we started, a year and a half after we started recording. Bet- this, uh, it says, you guys are tired of DC origin stories as I am. Between Zero Year, Forever Evil, Annuals, and Zero Issues, I feel like half of all the books DC have published in the past year have been origin stories or flashbacks. I'm not saying the bad books. I'm just tired of looking backwards. I'd prefer to read more normal stories that move the characters forward. Uh, I, I I think that was a, a 
for 2013, it, a, absolutely an accurate statement. And if you've noticed, they really haven't done that in quite some time now. Um, the, or, the closest thing I think we got is we're going to have the Flash Year One story mm-hmm. yeah. coming yeah. up. Um, can you? I, I don't. Have there been any DC books recently that have just been like a? The only thing I can think of, and I'm going to say no, I'm not sick of it, is a lot of times in OGN form, they will have fun with origin sure, stories. Sure, And I tend to like those. Like, I like the Earth One books. I like the... It's the um, closest we've had, probably. Yeah. Well, I think, the, I think the Zero Year was just... It, it was that all those... The Zero Year with um, Snyder just went on too long. Was Zero Year five years ago? That was a 2013 email. <laughs> yeah, that thing came out. Wow, yeah, five it years feels ago. like we've all lived five years ten ago, years. But when we were since reading it, it felt like six. <laughs> no, Zero Year was really slow. Like it, yeah. it, it the, like the progression of that story was just drawn out for too long. I like that it. It just should have been half. As, it should have just been half. half but the a time. lot of people jumped off. Like yeah. a fair amount of people jumped off of Snyder's run at that point. Yeah. Because it, it, of it just should. It, just taking Batman out of the current, current continuity for a year is. That's a tough ask. Mm-hmm. That's no, a real the, tough the ask. thing that drives me crazy about a lot of the solicitations, like for the Blackest Night Omnibus, for it's not a solicitation for the Blackest Night Omnibus. It's like the celebrating ten years yeah. Blackest Night Omnibus. It's been ten years since Blackest Night. Whew. Uh, so, uh, Kevin, so how many years has it been for Crisis for you? Which crisis? The first one. <laughs> on Infinite Earths? That came out in 85. <laughs> that was when I was born. <laughs> wow. I've got a dual hit from Julian Titus here. One's an email. Oh, sorry. One's a question on Twitter and one's an email. Let's do the question on Twitter first. Julian Titus. Thoughts on how they handled explaining Batman in the CW universe? I'm way more excited for Batwoman now when I was already really excited. You know, when we talked about the the crossover a little bit last episode, um, uh, we talked about Batwoman a bit. Uh, but I, I really liked I, – I think it's an interesting idea for Batman to not be there and for, his, for people to not be there and really just leave it to Batwoman. Now, I assume at some point they'll do something with Batman. I, I can't imagine they can keep it off forever. Or at least Bruce. Yeah. At least Bruce, yeah. 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 Do you have kind of the same feeling about Titans? Um, to bring him in, yeah, because they kind of like just keep like, leave, putting him in the background. I think Titans is attempting its best to squeeze into the DC cinematic universe, but just not say it is because I feel like it it could just slip T- Titans right in. Feels like it's in right? that universe. It totally does. Uh, uh, in one of the more recent episodes, when 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 uh, the Donna Troy episode, when she's they do the flashback yeah. talking uh, with, with, with uh, Dick and Donna when they're when they're talking, um, and they're like, "Oh, Bruce, Bruce and Diana are down, downstairs talking Justice League stuff, right?" And you're like, "Yeah, I could totally see this being like in the DC universe, you know, w- 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 with minor continuity kind of kind of maybe adjustments. Obviously, we don't see Robin in Justice League or anything like that, but you could." He was sent to his room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> hey, you, you, you could are feel you, are there's you guys similarities. The the outfit that we saw. In the case, in the thing with the spray paint, yeah, 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 and, and they never really go back to that. Um, uh, I don't know if we'll ever find out anything about that. And we can just assume that was Jason Todd. So, <laughs> this Jason Julian Todd. Titus have an email question. He does have an email. Hey, question. I'm thinking of starting a podcast. What do you think of the name Nerds Without Pants? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll like this even better. Oh, right. year Julian and Titus give us says, the date. "Give us the date." It's July 2013. He says. Hello, Conspirators, it's been a while. With the, <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. With the <laughs> Superman Batman movie officially oh, announced. Fucking God, no. This podcast is going to be 26 hours long. Now. I think there's one important question to ask. What's the bigger holy shit geek moment? <laughs> that scene in The Avengers where the team is shown together for the first time, or the upcoming first meeting between Superman and Batman? Oh. <laughs> Oh. While the Avengers took multiple movies to produce, we've been told to expect it for years. While any chance of a DC movie crossover has only been the stuff of dreams and wishes. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Thank you for the great question, Julian. Uh, I mean, to me, that scene in BVS when 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 Superman rips the top off of of the Batmobile and they kind of I, like 
That was a cool scene. I like that fight. Yeah, that but scene. it's not the same as the pan around <laughs> oh, the, Avengers. The like, pan, the pan of around Avengers, Avengers is, is just... That is one of the best yeah. scenes in any of the comic movies. Uh, uh, now, I will say this. Wonder Woman showing up at the end of BVS, that was far better than Superman <laughs> and Batman meeting. Right? Like, I mean, yeah. it had the music. It had the, like, just presence. Like, boom. It was amazing. The rest of the movie, sh- complete shit. But that po- that scene was amazing. I would say it's almost better than that Avengers moment. I, yeah, I, I mean, it's good. Is, is that, it's good. That, it's that music, it's man. One. It's that Wonder Woman theme <laughs> it's song. Ugh. I actually got more excitement if we're just saying holy shit geek moments. <laughs> to me, like those two that he offered are fine. Well, yeah. one of those is fine. Um, for me, like the Hulk <laughs> Thor fight in the first Avengers movie and the. Mm. Superman seeing the Flash running towards him in oh, yeah. Justice League. That's still one yeah. of my favorites. Those two scenes were better holy shit, shit geek moments for me than even the pan around. Yeah. In, yeah. Uh, that I scene agree. in Justice League will always get on as one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Incredible. Cur- incredible scene. Well, uh, what about the Hulk Loki part? <laughs> well, yeah, the, but that's just like a joke scene. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was fun, but I'm talking about like geek scenes. Yeah, true. Yeah. I think the geek scene for me was like the end of was like Iron Man 1 or 2 with like the after credits one where Nick Fury's like, yeah, like just one. Team. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, shit. I'll check yeah. back in five years. And again, this let's go back to <laughs> let's go back to this. This is one of the arguments that I always hate. Over they're like, well, they they built to the Avengers. They they didn't build to the Justice League. Bullshit. They had Nick Fury at the end of Iron Man one building the Avengers. Like they were going to that from the very first movie. So yeah. that was always an argument. I, n- I n- never held any water with me. I'd say that it holds water just from a we scheduled this many movies. Before we're delivering the Avengers movie, yeah, we never got phases. Like they, they had a plan from the beginning to build to the Avengers. Yeah, Maybe that's yeah. what DC needs is some phases. They, 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 they went okay. through one. Now they're in another one. I told you, <laughs> Shazam's going to get to the hundred percent mark, <laughs> and it's going to get greenlit three more movies, and then the director's going to well, get you're right. trolled on the internet. And we're not going to get the third one. Wes on Twitter asks, any word on when the Marvel Star Wars comics will be moving the stories forward to the period between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi? I don't think they've talked about that. I, I have no idea. I have no idea what their plans are. So from what I've, I've – so I've read up to 50. Um, and I mean there's just – there's two years between <laughs> yeah, Star Wars or New Hope and Empire. So they have a lot more time to deal with. Whereas with Return, there's not that much time in between the yeah, films. Yeah, it's, it's really – it's like six it's, months or something, right? Or If, if, if that. that like, yeah, it's really quick. So I think, that, I think that jumping forward in that, I don't know if necessarily know if they're going to do it in the actual book. And if they do do it in the actual book, you're not going to see it for a while. Well, and I think between Empire and, and, and um, uh, Star Wars and Empire too, there's sort of a lot of – World building where they're where they're pushing the empire or where they're pushing the rebellion for mm-hmm. they're kind of building these relationships. You kind of write out Han Solo entirely yeah. between Empire and Jedi. Um, well, it's, it, I mean, it's and it's, they're all they're kind of like they're kind of stuck in this one mission. There's only one place for them to go, and that's rescuing Han. They can't do a lot in there. Well, I mean, getting so, to Han is what, for me. Yeah. It just has to do with the fact that the time period between the original movies. I'm okay with reading some stories in but i'm not like dying for more stories in that time period yeah, which is yeah. if they wanted to sort of set set it after return of the jedi or even between the prequels and the original trilogy there's more stuff in there that i would be interested to see yeah which is part of the reason why stuff like rebels has worked so well for me yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that it's because yeah, yeah. well with reading a lot of the uh, the novels the new canon novels that they've they've released um a lot of that stuff is is built in like yeah. the novels and stuff. So, and the comic even if they wanted to do, do comic adaptions of the novels, I'd be fine with that. I just Dawn is the yeah. adaptation from that book. Yeah. So, yeah. They, they've done they've done that one. Yeah. Um, there's some great tie-ins like Poe Dameron ties in with yeah. um, Aftermath. Yeah. Um, I mean they've they've done a couple of mini series and stuff, but I would I'd be you and I have talked about this. Like that period of time for me is. <laughs> Really where I need details filled yeah. in. And adding details where I didn't even know there were details missing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it I mean it's 
you know, reading characters that I don't, I haven't seen before in the Star Wars mythos with the movies, it's it's a little jarring. But again, it's I think you have time to do it. Like Charlie, we talked like between A New Hope and Empire. Yeah, I don't between Empire and Return. It's the hunt for Han Solo. Like that's the story. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah, but I could see them doing a mini series or something yeah. to literally call it that and just no you have a 12 it. issue mini series of yeah. the droids going to work at Jabba's palace and that's got, the whole series written, no, 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 written, no, no, written by, by Paul Dini no, no, and I'm on board no no written by Tom King no 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 yeah. written by Paul Dini because Paul Dini worked on the droids cartoon oh, nice. therefore you have him write yes I'm on board well we have a very important <laughs> question here from Miles from November 2013 <laughs> <laughs> and he asked, I don't know if you guys saw this, but it looks like Marvel is planning on doing superhero TV shows on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> One of the more notable ones is Daredevil and will eventually lead to a Defender show. I'd like to know your thoughts. My thoughts is that was great while it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, definitely look into getting the Disney streaming app that's going to be coming out soon. Yeah, I have a feeling that uh, I have a feeling that they're going to. Or the adult Disney streaming app called Hulu. Um, did we do this? What? I think we did this. Oh, dear God. Well, you know, you have to delete the emails when we, or mark as read or archive something. Yeah. I don't know if I did this. Good God. We're going to be on like episode 807 um, of this podcast reading emails from like 2012. Well, let me get to another question. It's from Indie Gator. He says, back when you st- Twitter... Back when you started reading comics, what was your best hope for seeing your heroes on the big and small screen? And was it even close to what we actually received? I don't think – I can't speak for Chris. I don't think any of us at least in our wildest imaginations would have expected what we got. Yeah. Basically – Well, I mean I think for most of us it was – Batman was kind of that first real – hit the tim burton batman was the real hit i mean superman had come out but but there was but see for me there was (laughs) so superman the movie is 78 yeah superman 2 is like 81 and then it's and then the tires come off but the the prayer to this is craig's question right? yeah yeah the prayer the literal prayer was please let there be a batman movie (laughs) like superman it was 10 years later yeah but that was for me. Like, please let there be a Batman movie. I mean, if I had to say what 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 I pray for, I think we're getting closer to it with because we've gotten a couple team team movies. But all all I'm getting now is is Markovia news reports on on TV <laughs> channels on yeah, CW. Yeah. So I I got to take it where I can get it. Okay, Geo Force. For Ryan, it would be the New Warriors, right? <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, Nova. I mean. I I think um, I just think dark hawk. I don't know that I even want those in in any sort of um, in the MCU. You wouldn't want. If, I don't know. Because um, think about it, the New Warriors of the is is nineties. Like it, <laughs> it's the embodiment of the nineties. If you took New Warriors and moved them to today's. Like he it'd be, would it'd be, hate it'd be, it. It'd be trash millennials yeah, that I. Uh, I, 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 yeah. no, I think he's just no scared. He would yeah. hate it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got an email here from John Adams, and this, of course, um, is, is is this is a pretty evergreen this, question is, is, from hold 2015. On, hold on. Quick question: Was this is this in this century, or was it two centuries ago? Uh, uh, 2015. <laughs> yes, yes. Not 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 many years ago. Not President John Adams. Um, <laughs> He says, I was wondering how you figure how many comics to order for your shop. Is it just from experience or is it a big guess? Ryan spins a wheel. Uh, and- <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. There's a dartboard in back that we take our aggression out on. Um, we, we talk about With this. Dan Didio's face. We talk about this occasionally. Um, pre-orders help. Yep. When people pre-order comics, that gives me an idea. Love the hub. Hashtag. Love the hub. Clearly... Um, previous sales on a title help with Batman Man Who Laughs out this week. Mm-hmm. I promoted it to all my customers that got Batman Metal because this si- last week or last week. Sorry, um, thank you. Because um, <laughs> uh, got Batman Metal, same writer, 
right? Scott Snyder. Yeah, so did you order and, number ones at the number one of metal, or did you no. order it about a middle, mid-range from one to, what, six issues? Mm-hmm. Towards towards the end of metal. I figure if you wrote out all six issues of metal in the miniseries and tie-ins and specials like you, that, you're, you you're, love that you're probably in, life. right? So issue one is going to sell a ton, and then it'll... But it's kind of not trickle. That Joker just runs off the tongue. But metal didn't trickle down. Who metal didn't really trickle down. Metal like started strong and stayed strong. Yeah. But I tied I tied the issues to say, hey, look, you picked up metal. Do you want this? I had one person say no. We had a ton of pre orders for it online. So and we have FOC, which we talk about regularly. Mm. Our final order cutoff, which is three weeks prior to shipping, we can make last minute adjustments to our order numbers. So that really does help to, to really really shore up those orders. Um, but a lot of it is just, I mean. Do I like the creator? Do are people talking about it? Do I have mm-hmm. pre-orders? What does the book look like? Does it look like something my customers would buy? Because yeah. I see books that are successful and we don't sell any. I Who's see books doing that, all the variant covers. That, yeah. yeah, I see plenty of books that I'm like, well, that book doesn't do well, but other books like it have here. Are we gonna? You know, I talk regularly, like especially for some of the DC stuff, we sell way more than the national average. If you divide numbers sold by comic stores right i mean we're way higher on them. but then some books were way lower right yeah. so it's it- so as a retailer what would be your calculation <laughs> when dc announces plastic man by gail simone um <clears throat> although this number ebbs and flows uh, i have kind of flat numbers for kind of Mini series. Yeah. Your 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 a book your b book your c book your d book your e book Electric Warriors, I'm sorry, DC. I ordered three copies for the shelf. I'm down to my two subscribers, and I'm not ordering anymore. It's just a book that I don't think has any legs. I don't want to get stuck with it. We had no pre-orders. Do you even know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. there's, there's just zero interest, right? Yeah. That is a rarity. I usually will get a handful of shelf copies of anything, right? Gail Simone, Plastic Man. Okay. A lot of stores, not going to be a big hit. Here, we have a strong DC following. Gail Simone... Uh, I think her current quality has maybe not been up to the par of her best work, but I, 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 she still has her fans. Plastic Man's a fun character. We've sold, you know, okay Plastic Man numbers in the past. Not huge, but decent. That falls into, like, my kind of B or C category. Right now, for me, a DC sits at about 20, 25 copies, and that's well, what I ordered. And I think we ended with, like, 18 for the final issue, which is about which is decent, right? That That's okay, 18 copies. Um most of which were <clears throat> subscription because I think it was dropped to like towards the very end. It was mostly subscription. Show. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, again, Tom King does Heroes in Crisis. That's an A book. That's way up high. We're taking tons of pre-orders. We're pushing it on people like crazy. Um, my my Marvel eight my Marvel kind of like this is going to be like the the sort of B book or C book. C books maybe about ten copies right now. A, B books maybe fifteen eighteen. A books twenty five thirty five. That's kind of my high end. DC. I mean, I think I ordered like a hundred copies of of a Young Justice number one because of the variant covers. But I don't know where that's going. I've at Young Justice right now is a huge question mark. I have no idea where that's going to level out to be. Um, <clears throat> well, you're basing it off of like your action. Off Super Sons, off action, action off variant yeah. cover pre orders. And some of the Marvel stuff have gone up, right? Our 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 Spider Man, Avengers, Uncanny X Men, those numbers are higher. Daredevil went up a handful of copies for this last arc. FF is way higher than any previous FF book. Um uh so there are some of the Marvel books that what was like thirty, thirty five copies being the height, it's now fifty, sixty copies for, for some of those like big, big books. But that's amazing Spider Man. Yeah. Right? Uh Peter Parker, the new Peter Parker Spider-Man book looks fun, but that's not going to sell Amazing Spider-Man numbers, almost regardless of the creative team. Um, and a lot of it is go big at number one and then figure it out after that. Because if we sell a ton of number ones, you expect a thirty percent to forty percent drop off for number two, maybe fifty percent. If I sell out, then I didn't get enough. If I order a hundred and sell ten, oops. Well, I know to not get that many number twos, but that's rare i've i've only really really miscalculated a few times so well Ele- electric warriors um <laughs> i know i don't mean to throw that book under the bus it's just the first thing no i know mind. but it's that's one of those books that the premise sounds interesting yeah. it's telling the story between commandy and the legion of superheroes on the timeline they just didn't right 
And this is one of those things where if DC or let's just say the comics industry in general had pricing tiers, if that was like a dollar ninety nine book, I would probably check it out. Yeah. I just don't care enough at regular price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. it just falls by the wayside. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. Or it's something that like OG in it, like put it as an original graphic novel, like release yeah. it as something and market it as that. Like yeah. this is a gap. Or this, the untold this story. The untold yeah. story. Like market is that like electric warriors i looked at that and like who the hell are these characters yeah why do i care it's orlando okay whatever but i have you know his work is either hit or miss for me so i was like i'll skip it i don't need to i don't i didn't even check out number one because i was like eh, no but like you get things like uh i mean i know you ordered high for mr miracle number one um <coughs> yeah that's because you were going well Tom King's been doing Batman. Tom King does an amazing job. Well, on that. they also let him read that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and amazing, happens, it's happens amazing to... what happens when you <clears throat> actually get like to yep. read something prior to ordering yep. it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Deluxe hardcover. I think I maybe like one or two more here. Let's do a question from Norman. He says, "Yeah, you just recently put up a 2005 New Avengers issue on the wall with the Ronin." <laughs> uh, Brock says he loves it when you put new issues on the wall. What are a few of the most expensive issues that, you, that you've had on? Um, and just some books that never make the wall cherry picked by the staff. Uh, at least for the cherry picking, yeah, ca- <laughs> occasionally, not very regularly, but yeah, occasionally Absolutely. someone's like, I know it's a book Toby wants or Brock wants or something, but it's not very common. No, yeah, but that being said, it's not even necessarily just the staff. Like, one of the things that I've always thought was kind of cool is you know, your, your people, your regular people yeah. who shop at this yeah. store, there's Certain books that come in, you don't even need to necessarily put them on the shelf. You know, to show yeah, them yeah, to yeah, Jim yeah. or Scott or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, we got that all that uh, run of Daredevil, a lot of old old issues of Daredevil in, and like it's already been picked through even before yeah. I got to process. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, completely. yeah. We saw quite a few. Yeah. So yeah. no, I mean, I like when new books go up on the wall, kind of just to to showcase, like, um, you know first appearances and like it, it it's kind of a nice way to see <clears throat> you know what people are like looking for um you know I've, i i go to shops and it's like oh it's this key issue again it's it's like the same keys over and over and over and you kind of like all right they got the first appearance it's a gambit on the wall again okay no, the thing about wall books that amuse me and amuse me in a really weird way <coughs> is the with the way the movies and stuff have worked, the amount of books I've seen on the wall at decent prices that used to be in dollar bins or less. Oh, yeah. 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 Amazes me constantly. It's it's always that like we used to have giant stacks of this book sitting in dollar bins. <laughs> oh, there's so much of that. Yeah. Um, I just think uh, uh, you just don't know. Until the things really kind of hit it big on what's going to really get up there on the wall. Obviously, first appearances are key, and anyone buying back issues now, they understand that. That uh, I mean, they're going crazy these days. Well, uh, the, the nice thing about back, back issues, sales are just the off nice the thing wall. about like the back issue, like the putting it up on the wall, is like you can you can kind of <clears throat> you can kind of say, "Hey, this is what we got in, and this is something that's kind of big." So if like somebody brought in a Catwoman run that had all those Adam Hughes covers, yeah. You would go, oh, that one goes on, like, that one goes on the wall, that one goes on the wall, and people are like, what is this? And it's like, Adam Hughes cover, right? So on and so forth. I mean, we started doing labels, so it's like people, you you know, first appearance, cameo, low print run, like, what is, what is with this issue that might? (laughs) Those labels even help me as a. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and I think uh, uh, I we don't do like crazy Silver Age books. I mean, the stores around here that have twenty thousand dollar back issues on their wall. Like, we've never been like that. We've had we've had you know the high high hundreds thousand yeah. dollar before, but but not regularly. Uh, a couple hundred is maybe the m- biggest book we'll have at any one time. I just don't go hunting keys. I, I mean, if they come in, cool, but they so rarely happen. Um, so yeah, um, uh, I, I you know. Uh, Back issues are such so, so crazy these days. Like I was saying earlier, uh, uh, they're fun though. But people are picking up key issues. Uh, it's it's getting real hard out there. If you like if you like old comics, very hard. There's a tons of people with a lot of money 
spending a lot of money on them these days. Jim. <coughs> yeah, a lot of it's a lot of other people too. All right, um, I'm gonna, let's, let's let's get one question here. This is from it's, it's a fairly new one from April of 2017. Let's hit up this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Jason. Is it April first. He says, you guys harp a lot on renumbering and how it hurts sales. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it does. But tie-ins is what will make me quit buying a book most often. I would much rather buy a book with a number one on the cover when I bought number 18 two months ago. And then I buy a book with a crossover event logo overwhelms the book's title. I dumped most of my DC books during Blackest Night and never picked them back up. I dropped Marvel with Onslaught, slowly came back, and then dropped again with Secret Wars. Uh, I mostly read Image and Dark Horse, so I don't have to worry about that. What I do read from the big two is stuff like Moon Knight, which often restarts because he doesn't get sucked into the event after event. You mentioned Civil War II killing some books and hoping the possible Marvel reboot would bring readers back. I've said all that to ask. Do you gain more sales when a crossover makes someone pick up a tie-in book or when people jump on with a new number one? Crossovers can have some immediate effect, but it's immediate and then immediately goes away. Yeah. Uh, well, Spider- it also depends on what the crossover is. Like if you yeah. have if you have Spider Man crossing over with a character, you're going to bump sales on that. If you have, you know, <laughs> well, those Blackest Night issues shot sales up and then immediately shot sales right back yep. down. Right? Uh, there is there is no incentive for people to continue reading those titles. Normally. Did did Blackest Night though <laughs> being a Green Lantern effect? Because I know like the Sinestro Core War stuff yep. caused Green Lantern to rise and stay. At yeah. a higher level afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did it drop back down after Blackest Night, or did it actually rise after Blackest Night because of the... Uh, n- like, Green Lantern was didn't really change, because I think Green Lantern was still pretty strong. Uh, Green Lantern Core was, like, up and then back down to where it was before, which it got a good boost because of the crossover, but... Okay. The crossovers, you're really only there for that. Well, I, I, think, now, I think what Charlie was talking about is Blackest Night brought in... Again, brought in another wave of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And there were a lot of people who, like, I remember during Blackest Night, there were people who wanted to get a little more of the history and that kind of stuff. And yep. we're looking at what issues or do they go back to rebirth and whatnot. So yeah. I, I do think there was a surge in new Green Lantern readers, at least while the book was going on. Yeah. I'm just curious, did you see a higher number in sort of that main Green Lantern book afterwards? I don't think so because I remember numbers kind of dropping off during Brightest Day. Yeah, I, uh, I think I think Brightest Day is where it kind of started to. I think people came on for Black Knight and really liked it, but they 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 just didn't go on to the next thing. Now Brightest Day did okay for us; it did really yeah. well for us actually, but but not Black Knight numbers. Um, oh god, that Swamp Thing reveal! Oh, oh, so still good. one of the best. But we haven't had like surprisingly enough. I feel like we've been a little crossover light, both Marvel and DC recently. Well, we've been getting... We, we, they we, do miniseries they do now. Mini, like Aquaman and Suicide Squad will cross over yeah. for like an issue or two, and it's like it bumps the each one up by basically, well, what are my Aquaman numbers? What are my Suicide it, Squad numbers? It, it <clears throat> sort of matches one of them to the other, the yeah. higher one for an issue, and then right back down to where it was. Yeah. Like that, there, there tends to not be... Um, any uptick number ones can dramatically increase sales for a book if you go from a really dud creative team to a really good one yeah. um but that's not a guarantee right uh now you know what kills something sometimes renumbering the trade halfway through the run <laughs> i don't think that bothers I don't think way that to go too dc many with harley quinn i don't think it affects too many people Fuck but <laughs> yeah crossovers you know they could definitely help uh for for a month or two but yeah they tend to not there tends to not be any long-term growth there, where number ones can, if it's a good book. But again, but it has I think to be a good book. I think for the for the sake of what the renumbering is, the consistent renumbering. I mean, what from twenty twelve to was it twenty sixteen? Marvel had how many renumberings? I mean, they basically renumbered almost every book every year since like twenty eleven. At this point, <laughs> I don't know. Part of it for me really depends on. The way they're doing the renumbering, because sometimes renumbering makes sense. Sometimes renumbering mm-hmm. works very well. Um, but that being said, there's other times when there was no reason to renumber the book. It literally picks up exactly where the last issue yeah. left off. Yeah. They very, weren't very, trying anything new. Very common, unfortunately. Yeah, because yeah, like you I mean, Avengers renumbered at number one, and then they literally had issue <laughs> seven hundred. Yeah. 
yeah. but they had gone back the to the legacy numbering, numbering before. Like, it, it, well, it's 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 issue ten and seven hundred. Yeah. Like, it's both at the same time. Yeah, very frustrating. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, yeah. The I, I'm, uh, the answer is number one's help, but again, and it's basically it does tend to trend down after now, that. Pretty. Now, quick. the thing I think I've I one thing I think I've enjoy about the the renumbering is that for back issues it has solidified its this title year year done <laughs> no volumes nothing like yeah. like with the constant renumbering like Captain America we were like on oh, yeah. seven vo- like yeah, volume seven, seven. Or eight, yeah. it was like yeah. no we're done it this is the year when it started that's the year you put it, like to me that yep. make, that works volume numbers volumes is is, yeah. is done like for back <laughs> issues i just thinking of crossovers like the it seemed like the maybe mid to late 80s and into the 90s i'm thinking of like millennium crossover yeah. invasion crossover crisis crossover atlantis attacks crossover yep. all of these and I've just got to give a shout out to still my most notorious is the Crisis on Infinite Earths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On the banner on the cover, Crisis tie in yeah. or whatever. And then there's literally one panel in the comic yeah. where somebody goes, wow, it's weird. The sky's red. Anyway, on with the story. That happened so many times. Yeah. And I, I was. It was flash. And you bought them all. Through. No, I didn't buy them all <laughs> because I learned. After I bought the first couple, I had learned. Well, like, look been- inside. I feel like the last couple of years, both Marvel and DC have been better about this. It's not like I mean, we had crossover mania for a while again with Secret Wars and yeah, you know, but there, there, with every book, Civil War. I mean, but you know, every book is tying in, um, and it did help those books, right? But it's sort of like when it's an event every year and there's tie-ins every year, it's like, oh, fuck. Nowadays, we have... It's, it's Infinity War, and we're going to launch like six miniseries along with it, and it doesn't affect any of the other titles. And so... But again, who's buying those titles, right? It, but does is it better? Is it better to not cannibalize the sales of your other book? Because I think the crossovers do, can't, can't hurt them. But it can also help that issue. Is the trade-off well, worth it? Well, things for like No Justice, like Chris, last week you picked up... Um a no justice tie in that you didn't that you didn't get uh the green arrow no justice tie in and that one ties in very well with what happens with no justice yeah with daniel yeah. like yeah. and so the thing is but there's like, almost no tie ins it's it's like like two tie ins or something yeah but like it's like i think keeping tie ins to a minimum is good and but, keeping but, but, but no but, justice isn't like a big crossover event right no, it's a four no, issue it was mini a four series. issue mini yeah, but it was yeah. like these characters are also affected by this story so right. it, it and it in the actual Green Arrow book, it came at a good time for it to be like, oh, hey, remember, we have this tie-in issue. But one thing I like about crossovers, though, it does show the bigger connected universe, right? I mean, yeah. it is the point where this thing that affects everyone, you're like, oh, these characters are kind of all together. Because the books can get very insular from time to time where you're like, yeah, these books aren't really talking to each other a lot. Right? And I think Marvel and DC are doing that a lot right now. These are both – their books are very standalone, which is good in some fashion, but – I do like that interconnectivity. So. Well, I think that I think a good example, a recent example, is um, with the Drowned Earth. Yeah. was the the Titans. Yeah, uh, um, tie in book. Yeah, like if you were reading ti- Titans, you would be reading Titans, and then all of a sudden we see the Titans in Drowned Earth. We see what's happening, and then they're moved out of that story. Yeah, but I think it gives you just enough of a tease of Drowned Earth that you might be interested in going and picking up the Drowned Earth. Yeah, crossover. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's not like it's if you're reading the the Drowned Earth, you might pick up the just the Titans, but you don't have to. Right. Right. Um, it'll add to the story for you if you like the Titans, but I think it's one of those things where it go it, it has a nice blend either way. Yeah. But the tie in itself in the actual book leads more to pulling you away from that book and exposing you to something else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of taking you out of what you were experiencing and in, into something where what the what the sky is red. Okay, let's move <laughs> on. I've been feeling those uh, DC mini crossovers lately, where it's just like, okay, here's weekly four things. Yeah, in done. A month you're in and you're out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they and have it, the nice little it works well. like, like specials that that cap it off. <sighs> yeah, mm-hmm. I do without the specials. Yeah. I've had them I don't. A I don't night. mind the specials so much because I think that it's. I think the title is what weirds me out, but I understand why they do it. So with Witching Hour, it was, it was you know Justice League Dark, Wonder Woman, and then the other one was Wonder Woman Justice League Dark. So that's really dumb. 
Well, it's, it's like Marvel's <laughs> alphas and omegas and everything. It's like, just tell the story in the book, guys. You don't need these little specials. You don't need no. these extra things. To me, the whole Aquaman, Justice League, Justice League Aquaman <laughs> reminds me of the Rebirth issue and then the number one issue. It just causes confusion. Yeah. It just causes people to be like, are these the same issue? I'm- well, the, well, and they, they do it because it's basically – they're both double-sized, so it's four issues and four issues in the crossover. You can do it in a month, but it's eight issues. There's your trade paperback. Yeah. You know, it would take four months or eight or two months if you did it longer. So – I understand why. If but. it was a alpha, the reason I said it's stupid is if it was an alpha and omega or whatnot. At least it's very easy to tell that it's not the same book. But when you just have the little things at the top, the switch, and then the, the big title, yeah, yeah, it's really dumb. Yeah, they get, there's got to be a better. There's got to be a better way to do that. Well, I'm sure we'll think about something, especially next in week. an age of variant covers. Oh, oh yeah, that makes it harder. So the next episode that will be released after this, Christmas me if Day, I'm wrong, will be Christmas Aquaman. Day, Aquaman movie review. Merry Christmas to all! You get uh, a comic should, conspiracy. Should, should, should well, go we up. say that on oh, the Aquaman yes. episode. Should go say up. Merry Christmas, Christmas <laughs> oh, <shut> morning. <laughs> Uh, for, for for when you're hanging out no, with your see, see, we, friends, we tell people we have to tell people that preemptively you're going to get a gift from us, and you can use it to ignore your goddamn family. This one will be Comics Conspiracy, Merry Christmas. The next one will be Merry Christmas. Comics <laughs> yeah, that works. Uh, so we should – hopefully we've all seen Aquaman and I guess – well, hopefully we have because we recorded a podcast about it. So that will be up Christmas As long as you give the tickets. Yeah. I'll, I, I'm, I'm on that. Um, I already got them. I just haven't picked them up yet. Uh, so uh, have, a, have a good Christmas and we'll, we'll see you guys next week. We're gonna talk some Patreon backers here real quick. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let everyone know. This whole know. time warp is very confusing. Yeah, I'm gonna because let... right now we should be telling them to have a good Christmas Eve because they will hear from us again on Christmas Day. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, we, conceivably. I, I, I hope you had <laughs> have hope, a happy holiday. I hope you had a good we Christmas Eve. We will see Eve. you at Christmas Eve, yeah. Christmas Day, and I hope you you hope you get what you want on Christmas Day. Hear our episode Christmas Day and have a good christmas and you can I hope maybe, you just hear our episode at some point maybe yes. you don't actually listen to us on christmas day and you, right and so if you don't listen to our christmas episode on <laughs> God, christmas day t- anytime i time hope sorry for opening right, this door I, I hope you have a good i love christmas. the fact that we're now trying to brand it as a like our christmas episode our we're, christmas we're like a special. television special and if you don't celebrate christmas i hope you have a good tuesday and i hope you enjoyed aquaman we'll talk about that next week julian titus Nerds of the Pants podcast at Pixelbit.com. No pants, pants. no more. God, it didn't even improve oh, from last oh, week. No. I like pants no more. Yeah. Jody That's Lawson how we is no more. Change we it. star firing it. Jody Lawson <laughs> is canon the Triacomics Anthology at Triacomicsstudio.com. Sam, Ch- uh, Sam Che, Craig Anderson, Joe Duff, Andrew Nelson Mendez over at the Recovery of an Anime Junkie podcast. Dar Fox 8 over at Manga Machinations and Page Turners, a comic book podcast, which which can be found at pageturnerspodcast.libson.com. Thank you guys all for your support on Patreon.com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. A buck or three or more. Always uh, more. If, Always if, if more. You, if you want to, you can, yeah. Comicspiracypodcast.com, geekbox.net, and iTunes is where you can find all our previous episodes. Always helps when you rate and review us. You can go to uh, youtube.com slash comicsconspiracy and listen to us on there as well if you would like. Uh, those long form questions, I'll get to them in three to five years. You can send it to me at <laughs> the comic conspiracy at geekbox.net. Digital.comicsconspiracy.biz is where you can pick up all your digital comic books. Read them on that iPad you just got for Christmas. Santa left under your tree. Yeah, nobody buys iPads anymore. They're getting like Android tablets. They're getting if you, if you get the uh, the, the, the the Amazon, Am, yeah, Amazon owns Comicsology. They must have Comicsology. Yeah, on, it's on, like on you can get a Android, Android fire, uh, yeah. Kindle. Yeah, uh, conspiratorbrock.com. That's Brock's blog and video pull list and uh, unboxing videos, statue unboxing videos. You can yeah, I'll try check them out there. I hopefully have some more content up for you guys. Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension so podcast. That's Charlie's Doctor Who podcast. No Doctor Who episode, uh, Christmas episode this uh, year. However, there is a New Year's episode, which I'm sure they're going to be doing a fabulous special on next week. In two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> And Etsy.com so what, what day is it? And Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. That is my wife Leanne's Etsy store. You can go on there and pick up some artwork from her. 
Uh, go on Twitter and yell at us. I'm Ryan Higgins. Ryan. Brock is Brock Sager. Larson Bryce. That's Bryce Larson, if you didn't know. Toby XI is Toby. Charlie is Insanity and Chaos. The store is ComicsCon store. Uh, our good friend Scott is C.S. Shea. He should be back on soon. Chris is, once again. C.G. Chris G. Bunch. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. And that Kevin Sharp over there, his handle on Twitter, that Kevin Sharp. Yeah, that Kevin know. Sharp. Geekbox Comedy Button, Mago Machinations, and Infinite Bitch over on YouTube. You can uh, check out all of the uh, additional content from our partners and people that we are friends with and know. Brock, so, before Chris, we go. Before you leave, before you're, you know, because you won't be here, uh, do you have a random pick for our audience? Well,. I would like to recommend the New Talent Showcase 2018. Oh, random. Yeah, extremely random pick. Uh, showcasing great work from people who are up and coming over in D.C. land. Nice. Definitely go harass your local comic book retailer that or probably didn't order the hub <laughs> and go find it. All right. I uh, hope you guys found that book. Thank you for your recommendation, Chris. Sure. And uh, we'll catch everyone on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs>